This has been another Pacer basketball broadcast with complete play-by-play coverage and commentary by Joe McConnell. WIBC congratulates the Pacers on another great season. Have a good summer and join us next fall for ABA basketball on the IBC Pacer Basketball Network. This is WIBC in Indianapolis. We have right now a temperature reading of 63 degrees under cloudy skies. Winds out of the northwest 17 miles per hour, gusting to 26 miles per hour. And now back to the 500-mile qualifications and Lou Palmer. Situation now. The track is open for practice. Indeed, since the halftime in the Pacers game, the only activity that uh, we could pass along to you would be, well, we'll get to it all. Uh, at the moment, let us accomplish what has just occurred and then back up from there. A.J. Foyt has now qualified his Coyote and at a disappointing speed for Foyt. There was a problem with the car. It was mechanical. And though we are not absolutely clear, it would almost seem to be related. It would almost seem to have to be related to a turbocharger situation, a matter of boost, a matter of getting the engine RPMs up to where it was necessary. There is wind, but it does not account for Foyt's 188.927 miles an hour. The entry number is 14, and Foyt has qualified for what at the moment is the 19th starting berth in a field of 20. Only Sam Posey's run has been slower at 187.921 miles an hour. There is the other ingredient of the day that saw new records set in terms of qualifying, but also saw a death at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. For those who may not have been aware earlier, it occurred in practice this morning, a practice period before the qualifications began at 11 o'clock, actually slightly delayed from that point, between 9 and 10.30, the practice time was allowed. And in the middle of that practice period, a car moved into the number one turn and then suddenly darted to the outer retaining wall, bounced, flipped in the air. There was fire, though he was rushed to the hospital. Art Pollard was pronounced dead this morning at 10.40. A fine competitor, a fine man. Art Pollard, dead as the result of injuries suffered in practice this morning at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Where the other news focused on, well, really, if we are talking about a 200-mile-an-hour lap, we are eight-tenths of a second off. In fact, how much time that is, Tom Lucas is standing by and I'm not sure you can click eight-tenths of a second off on the watches, Tom, but I'd like to see you try just to give an indication of the difference between that run and what would have been a 200-mile-an-hour run so you know that we came very close to it, and it was a superb job by Johnny Rutherford. Here's the click, eight-tenths of a second. And that's all the difference between a 199.071 mile an hour lap that Johnny Rutherford turned and what has become a magic 200 mile an hour mark. Down to the business then of the field as it is set with practice underway now, no qualification attempt and a review of the day's activities after we pause for these words. When your muffler's gone kaplooey, like old mufflers often do, because it's muffled all its muffles. When your muffler says, I'm through, there's a thing you gotta do. There's a guy you gotta know. Let me tell you about this dude. 
let me tell you kind of slow. Yeah. Because he's the muffler guy. He's the busiest, best-known muffler guy in town. He's the muffler guy. He's changed his name to Car X. He used to have an oval sign, but he got over oval. Now he's got a square sign. He's the muffler guy. It says Car X right on it. A Car X muffler gives you a better guarantee. No charge ever for parts or labor. Nothing. So when your muffler goes to Pluey, there's a Car X muffler shop near you. At 1510 North Shape. 4706 North Keystone, 2427 West 16th Street, 3051 Madison. If you've always wanted to own a home in the country, but always thought it would cost too much, then you should see Crooked Creek, an all-new condominium community that's just about ready to open. Although all the final touches aren't fully completed, they're far enough along for you to see what they're doing. If you like, you can tour the two- and three-bedroom models, available in several floor-plan designs. If your surroundings are important to you, then you'll like the trees and the wooded land along the creek that have been set aside just for its beauty alone. Of course, the whole reason you'd want to live in a condominium is that someone else can do the routine maintenance, giving you more free time. And that's fine, but you also get the tax advantages, equity buildup, and value appreciation just like any other homeowner. Interested? And then see the models this weekend. They're open from noon till 6. Crooked Creek is located on Payne Road, one half mile south of 86th in northwest Indianapolis. Crooked Creek Condominiums, developed by Columbia Properties, the building development division of the Citizens Financial Corporation. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, it is an open practice period now. We have 20 cars in the field of 33 set for the moment. And here standing alongside me is Donald Davidson, and I think probably the wisest thing to do is to set the field in order of speed at this time, Donald. So what I'll do is uh, try and go through from the scoring tower up there, and maybe you can keep me advised of the actual speeds themselves. Car number seven, the quickest man of all, is Johnny Rutherford. His fast lap was 199.071 miles an hour. Rutherford's four-lap average, 198.413 miles an hour. Now, that is a new track record in reviewing last year's pace. Uh, again, the Bobby Unser figures were what, Donald? Uh, Bobby's one lap was 196.678, and his four-lap record was 195.940. So, really, we have seen another significant jump in speed. Uh, what what occurs is we get a magic number like 200 and uh, then perhaps don't really notice what has occurred. 196.6, we've gone up now to 199. Uh, that, that's a very good gain, is it not, measuring over past years? Uh, back in, uh, of course, back through the 50s, and in fact any time up until the late 60s and early 70s, three miles an hour was a significant jump. But of course from 19... Uh, <laughs> 1970 to 1971, there was a jump of 9 miles an hour, and then from 71 to 72, there was a jump of 16 miles per hour. So really, the climb of 3 miles an hour today is, is rather slight by those comparisons. Yeah, it seems so. What has occurred is in the immediate past, we've gotten an awful lot of work done in the jumps for speed. Now we're working with pretty much the same configurations of automobiles. Uh, much the same sort of tire component. They were at least a year ahead on that, both Goodyear and Firestone, and uh, now we are settling into a situation where oh, I suppose it is a more reasonable increase in speed, considering there's been no formula change. Yes, that's right, and uh, I think uh, another interesting thing is uh, it's, it, we do not really think of Johnny Rutherford as a veteran driver. He still seems like the new boy in town, but we did check back to see his average speed in his rookie year of 1963, he made the field at an average speed of 148 miles per hour. So in the 10 years that he's been running here, his qualifying times have jumped 50 miles per hour. All right, so Johnny Rutherford is on the pole at the moment with an average speed of 198.413 miles an hour. Now, in the middle of the front row, we have... A